Hey everyone, this is Kyle with Simulation Lab here in Brooklyn, New York. Coming back at you with another 3D Studio Max tutorial using TieFlow. Um, today we're going to be focusing on using Tie Actors. Um, actors are really dynamic uh, in the sense that you can um, uh, use particular like physics bindings to maintain the rigidity between um, bones and uh, and then you can have an animated character um, interact with other objects in the scene whilst um, maintaining the original animation applied to the character. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look at uh, what that means. Um, I did an example video here, um, so we'll kind of we'll watch this. <laughs> Totally stupid, um, but the cops are very excited about the donut truck, and they uh, basically what happens is um, I have a part, basically just a simple particle system that launches the cop actors out, and the cops have like a, a running animation. It's in a loop, and then when they hit the truck, they like the animations are interrupted, but they are, they continue. Um, and I originally thought about. Um, Having well, like once the cops like hit the truck or hit each other, then they just turn into a rag doll. And I uh, I was able to do that. However, I, I just thought this looked more fun, having them kind of flail around and continue running like in space. <laughs> so I don't know. I, th I thought it was more stupid looking, so I decided to keep it. Anyway, we're gonna do something similar to that. Um, and this one, I think what we'll do is so be kind of like a working session slash tutorial, I guess. Um. Have the cops like um, launch from a particular like um, location, and then fly like towards the donut, and then orbit around the donut, and they kind of like flail around. I don't know. Well, let's just see what happens. Um, but that's the idea. So I have my cop. It's a basic biped rigged character, um, and tie actors work with any kind of boned um, character. So you could uh, set it up to be however you would like. Um, I recommend using the biped if you just have like a humanoid character. Otherwise, you can use a cat rig. Anything that has like um, uh, mesh bones that you can use as part of the simulation. Um, if it's just the regular bones, you just you might have to go and attribute um, geometry around the bones to act as a sort of collider um, in your physics simulation. So that's just one thing to keep mind of. Um, also, once you skin your character, you're going to have to use the skin modifier. Um, I've tried using rigged skinned characters using the physique modifier, and it doesn't seem to work uh, for whatever reason. So just use the skin modifier. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. And I have like a simple on the on the biped. Um, it's just a simple. Uh, I have like a I have a couple other. <laughs> dot bip files that i've been using but this is just a simple little run animation that i made very simple um so we use this and it just plays one cycle and then i'm going to set it to loop so first things first we'll go ahead and set up our um tie actor we'll add all of the components to it and we'll go ahead and zero this out being that's a copy zeroed out and then I have multiple components uh, that are skinned to this um, biped. So I'm going to grab all the pieces here. I'm going to grab that too. Uh, let's see. Let's grab his patches. And I think his shoes, his, his belt, and his gun. And I think that's about it. I just want to grab all the skin parts, and I got his face already. Okay, um, so now that we have that, um, under our tie actor in our animation here, add an animation sequence, and we're going to name this run. Uh, and I know it's 17 frames long. So we click on our, but one of our bones here goes to about 17, 17 frames. So you want to make sure that you set the sequence name, and you have to remember that name. 
uh, later on when you set up your tie flow sim. Um, and then choose the amount of frames that are in that particular animation sequence. And I think we can leave the rest of this. We're not going to use triggers. Um, yeah, okay. So that's uh, that's it for our tie actor. And we'll go ahead. And I have our donut here as well. And I kind of like did a little simple um, rotation animation on it. So the idea is, <laughs> uh, I mean, for now, that's the, the idea is um, that I'm going to have them spawn somewhere like maybe above or on the side or something and they're going to fly out of the spawn location and then swirl around the donut um okay so first things first is you know what we'll do uh, while, we, while we're here i'll create a, a tie icon and put it like here maybe make this like I'm in centimeters and my scene, the scale of my character is really big for whatever reason, don't ask. Um, but that's, uh, so I just, yeah, so the length is 4,000 by 4,000. It really is up to your scene scale. Um, and then I'm gonna raise this up a little bit. I guess I'll just put it here. Not totally sure what's gonna happen here, but uh, bear with me. And We'll go ahead and create our tie flow object here and open the editor just so you can see everything. Okay. Okay. Uh, first things first, we're going to birth some particles. I'm going to do like a zero to 100 and I'll do 50 total, and I could I could remove this. I don't care about that. Um, position icon, and we're gonna go ahead and choose our icon there. Surface is fine. That's yeah, and then um, yeah, that should be good. And then and then we'll dump in our actor. And choose our tie actor. Okay. And then I think I'm going to. Uh, and then I, under our tie actor, I'm going to set it to rig particles instead of actor particles. Um, you could choose instance material from actor nodes. Um, that's not really going to work for skin objects, I don't think. I don't remember. Uh, Regardless, we'll play with that later. Um, okay, so then after we have that set up, um, I don't think this is gonna really do anything right now. Okay, so we, we are showing some. Real quick, what I'm gonna do is hide my original character. We don't need him anymore. I think I got him on that, yep. Okay, so I'm gonna hide my original character. We don't need him. And if I scrub, uh, at least we see some actor particles starting to appear. So that's cool, um, but they're not doing anything yet because we have to uh, assign our actor animation. So we'll put in the actor animation operator. And then the sequence name is run. And it's as simple as that. Uh, I'm gonna set it to loop. And then to continue with the rest of our simulation, we're gonna be using physics uh physics uh, uh shapes and um collision and bindings and stuff like that so we're going to do bind pose matching and basically what this does is um is allows the uh influence of the physics collision the physics uh bindings and everything um to have an effect on the actor's animation but then it always assume it like resumes the animation after the physics collision or you know like bind modification has occurred. So we'll set this to be match uh, match strength to be one because we want it to match the animation. Um, playback speed we'll leave at one. Okay. Um, and then from our tie actor we're going to. Uh, Set up a physics shape. 
leave it at convex hull. Um, and then before we do this, let's just let's just verify that our yep. Okay, so our actors are populating on the icon and they're running. So that's cool. Got the little run cycle set up, and I can vary the um, sequence. I could uh, vary the speed, the frame range. Maybe we'll just do a variation of the 20%. Uh, playback so like some run a little faster some run a little slower okay cool uh, okay and then we'll continue on with uh, setting up our physics part sim part of the sim okay uh, set that to geometry then we'll do a physics bind and we'll do rigid joint And then for our swing and twist settings, we're gonna have to set these really high. Um, the reason being is that um, when an object um, collides with the actors um, or something happens to one of the um, actors ligaments um, in terms of being a part of the physics simulation, uh, it's gonna wanna like, like totally rip, like say like if it, collides with an arm or something, it's going to want to like rip it out of its sockets. We want to make sure those um, swing and twist settings for the binding is like super strong um, to make sure that it doesn't like completely fly out of the socket because that, that's that, that's what's going to happen. So we'll set this to something pretty high. I've had pretty good luck with like around 50,000 from my previous animation. Leave the dampening where it's at. Um, okay. And then we'll toss in a phys physics collision. And it's going to collide with the donut. So I'm going to go ahead and pick our donut. That should be good. Um, OK, and then from here, I think I'm going to add a force. So we'll go ahead and create a gravity force, like a spherical gravity. Could, you, this could be done in a million different ways, but we'll go ahead and just create a simple little gravity force around our donut. It's going to pull. We could also set up a, a uh, find object event, find target event, and um, set the target to be the donut. Because then once it like finds the donut, then what does it do? You know, maybe we want to continuously try to find the donut. And that'll give us this like swirling motion that I kind of want. I kind of want them to like collide with each other and like swirl around the donut. Um, so I'm just going to add a gravity, little spherical gravity sim for now. I'll set it to something like 10, pretty high. Um, okay, so once we have that set up, we're going to add it. I might add a little bit of Perlin noise later, but we'll just see how this works. Okay, and if you don't want to see the bones, you can unhide those. Oops. Okay, and we're getting something a little weird happening here. You see the uh, bones are detaching from the actors. So it's a little bit strange. Uh, we don't want that. <laughs> Unless you want the, unless you want that, <laughs> that looks really weird. But it looks like the torso bones are like detaching from the actual, um, from the uh, pelvis. So we'll um, we'll take a look at that. Okay. So the reason why that strange stretching thing was happening is that uh, underneath our physics bind operator, all the way at the bottom is actor ragdoll bind. And you want to enable this. Make sure that's enabled, and then that'll give you our uh, clean uh, ragdoll effect. So now we got our cops flying towards the donut. They hit the donut. They don't go through it. That's good. Might want to increase the physics sub steps a little bit. But looks in pretty good. 
And from here we can apply our material to the Typhlo object. Okay. So I got my cop material set up, so I'm going to go ahead and apply that to our overall Typhlo object there. Yeah, it's looking pretty cool. You could tell that they're still running, but when they collide with the donut, like this guy, his legs and his torso are twisting. This guy's head is up this guy's ass. There's uh, this guy's getting kicked in the face. So there's a lot of like really cool dynamic things happening here, which I really like. Um, okay, so from here, I'll go ahead and set up a camera. I'll start framing this out. I'm going to use F-Storm for this. Because I love F-Storm. And choose a camera, choose a target, and I'm going to zero these out to X. Frame it up a little bit there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, so this is a so using actors in this way is pretty simple. Um, if you wanted like a simple ragdoll effect um, or you want to have the characters play some kind of animation um, and then have the animation interrupted by a particular collider or something like that, um, pretty, pretty simple to do. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and continue on. Um, there's a couple other things you could do. You could like decrease the speed of the overall animation. Um, you could put it maybe a little slow operator in there or something, but I think for now this is this is pretty cool. But maybe um, I was thinking maybe we could have the cops like fall to the ground or something, but I think this is probably good enough for now. This is looking pretty cool. Maybe we'll put like a spin force on them. <laughs> big cop ball around the donut <laughs> okay I think I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking so far so we will uh, set up some some lights and stuff and for those of you who are actually you know what I'm gonna do my background plane first we'll keep this scene really simple like most scenes that I do, I just typically do some really simple stuff. Um, as far as the background is concerned. Um, edit poly. Toss a chamfer modifier on there. One. Let's hit the background. One thing we could do is I could vary the color of the cops' uniforms. Um, for this example, I probably just want to keep them all this like light blue. I kind of like that contrast with the donut. Um, but you could do that um, using the material ID node um, and set it to random. And you have to do some trickery with your material. And the issue is that with materials like this that I have, um, it's a mult, it's a multi sub object material for the cop model itself. Um, there's not really a way to assign multiple multi sub object materials to a flow. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to get around that. Um, one idea I do have uh, that I haven't yet tested is um, is using flat iron. And if you guys are not familiar with flat iron, it's a really cool little plugin um, that you could. Uh, I think there's a free version, but basically what it does is you can uh, okay, so this is the flat iron plugin, and um, it's it works really well um, for baking light. Um, so basically, what you could do is you can grab like a bunch of objects. You can grab. Sorry, I have a dog over here that's barking. 
<laughs> uh, you can grab a bunch of objects, like let's say your entire character. Um, so I'll pop open our character real quick so we can look at him. Um, so you can grab basically all the components of the character, right? And then you can set it to organic or whatever you want to unwrap. Um, and you can unwrap, create basically like a flat UVW map for the entire set of, of components of this character. Um, and this works really great for all kinds of stuff. So like flat iron is great for um, unwrapping and light baking to bring in assets into like game engines, like Unreal or Unity or whatever. Um, so it's a really helpful plugin for that. Um, but it also can help us clean up. Again, I haven't tested this yet. I'm going to test it probably. Um, if you guys know a better way to do this, leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, but I have a hunch that this will totally work. Um, so what I would probably do is um, put uh, my character in the, uh, the figure mode. And then I would grab all the pieces and then unwrap everything and set up some lights and then bake the texture, all the textures onto the objects. And Flatiron works really well to um, bake all the textures into one file, like one image file for your, for a texture map. And so therefore, you don't have to use a multi-sub object material. You could just use one flat texture map for the entire model. So that's one way of doing it. Otherwise, um, Max has its own little light baking thing, which is not so good. But um, just so you guys know that this exists. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and hide this. I'm not going to do that now because this is going to take more time than, than I want the tutorial to be. So I'm going to unhide this. OK, we'll go ahead and um, continue setting up some lights and stuff. I already applied a uh, background material as white. Um, pretty simple. So we'll keep the scene really super simple and clean just for the sake of the tutorial brevity's sake. Um, I add like a big disk light here. Raise this up a little bit. And if you guys watch my other tutorials, I have some tutorials where I go over render settings and stuff like that. But this, uh, this one will, maybe we'll just keep it really simple. So add a light there and a light here. Just one a little further back. And set this to like something like four. And this would be like eight. Okay. And then go up some really brief render settings. So I'm going to set this to like 1080. Good enough for Instagram. As I know, y'all are probably doing stuff for Instagram, maybe. Um, and then my total length was 270. I think I'm going to set that to, I don't know. Um, kernel settings, I usually do 12 for light samples, 24 for the max depth, and then 0 0.001 for noise threshold and leave everything else default. Um, and then environment, I have an HDRI set up, I think. Yeah. So uh, I grabbed a, just this basic HDRI map using the F-Storm bitmap, set it to a spherical environment, and uh, I set my gamma to 1.5, but you can play with that number, and then I set my multiplier to 2. It just kind of depends on how much you want the HDRI to reflect and influence the scene, which in this case, there's not very many reflective materials, so it won't have that much of an influence. Um, regardless, um, I think we're good with that. Uh, let's, uh, let's try to do a little test to render here. I'll get an interactive render, and you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. I always go to iteratively save your work in case this thing crashes, because sometimes it likes to. And we'll try to process a render here. Cool. So it looks like our cops are showing up. Material for the cops are correct. It looks like I'm missing the texture map for my donut here, so I'm going to go ahead and reapply that.
All right, guys, uh, my headphones have died once again. Sorry about that. Um, but we're pretty much wrapped up with this tutorial. Um, we got our uh, cops flailing around, flailing around our donut here, and um, it's going to look pretty cool when it's rendered out. So I'm going to I'm going to process this rendering and uh, probably share it uh, to Instagram. I might do another camera cut, maybe closer up to some of the cops. Like these two cops are kissing right there, and I think that's pretty funny. So I might find some like stupid little moments like that. Um, regardless, um, yeah, that's it. That's basically for the um, tutorial. We covered uh, setting up a simple rigged character um, as an actor, uh, bringing that tie actor into our simulation and applying some um, physics binding and um, collision to it, um, and then having the animation set up in a dynamic way where we use bind pose matching um, to maintain the animation while the physics physics um, uh, collision and binding and force and things like that are applied to those particular bones and stuff so all in all um, you know hope you guys got something from this tutorial um, if you have any Suggestions on future tutorials uh, to cover more stuff about what you could do with um, tie actors. Um, please leave a comment below. If you have any other, any other suggestions for other, you know, exploring any other tutorials, uh, please let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the tutorial, found it useful, please leave a comment for the algorithm gods, right? And uh, smash the like button and subscribe for more stuff. Um, so I'm going to be sharing some more tutorials. I got a little list going. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.